Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm pretty excited to be doing my detailed review on the Keurig K Supreme Plus Smart Coffee Maker. They just released this in 2021. I've been doing several reviews on different aspects of this coffee maker. This is going to be my general uh, detailed review. Now if you want to get specific on some items, I've got different um, videos on how to make favorites, the high altitude, remote brew, D-scale, clean needles, rinse pods, reusable K-cups, iced coffee, iced tea, how to connect the Wi-Fi, how to turn it on, how to um, set it up for the first time. I'm not going to be able to go into all, the, all those aspects of this. That would be a very long video. So I broke out several of those into individual videos. Please check out those. I'll put a, a playlist with all the videos for this smart coffee maker. But this is going to be my general detailed review. I also did a comparison with the K-Supreme Plus and the K-Supreme. Check out that video. So first and foremost, this is the first Keurig that I know of that connects to Wi-Fi. And that's why they consider it a smart brewer. Now, one of the questions I've asked, you don't have to connect the brewer to Wi-Fi. You do, you do lose some of the functionality of it but you don't have to connect it to Wi-Fi in order to use it. You can use it without it being connected to Wi-Fi. In my opinion, this brewer works best when you connect it to Wi-Fi. Keurig came out with an app. You're gonna install the app on your tablet or your smartphone, Apple or Android. That's gonna to connect to the Wi-Fi and that's how you're gonna set it up to the Wi-Fi. If you want detailed uh, dimensions of this, um, check my unboxing. I measure it and tell you all about the dimensions of it. So let's just talk about it for a minute. It's $1.99. You could only get it from the Keurig website right now. I imagine it's going to be available at other places soon. It has Brew ID. This is something new that they've come out. Brew ID. It's got a little camera inside here. And so when I put a cake up in, there is a camera right up here. I don't know if you can see that. See, that, that, that is brand new to Keurig. So we can see... Right there. There is the camera. That's, that's probably the main thing about this coffee maker is that camera and there's like a little flash. And when you close the handle, it's pretty smart. When you close the handle, it takes a picture of the K cup and it recognizes it and it gives you recommended brew settings. Now, in order for that brew ID to work, it does have to be connected to Wi-Fi. I have run experiments on that. It will, it will not give you a recommended brew setting if you don't have it uh, connected to Wi-Fi. So this is the part of their multi-brew technology. It's got five needles on the top. All Hot water is going to come out all five of those needles. And it's going to puncture the top of the K-cup. And then you've got your single needle down here in the bottom. So this is a lot like their K-Supremes, but it's a lot different than their other Keurigs. Most Keurigs have just one single needle up at the top. So Miss Fiona likes to help with my reviews. Okay, so let's look around. It's got a really nice stainless steel finish. It's kind of like a new modern look. This is a steel handle. It's got a really nice display. I've already got mine set up and connected to Wi-Fi. That's why the little Wi-Fi light is on. You've got favorite buttons. You've got the recommended brew setting button. You've got an over ice button right here. Now they've really upped their game with the strength and the temperature. So never before, you've got five different strengths and six different temperatures. You've got four ounce, six ounce, eight ounce, 10 ounce, 12 ounce. This is how much water is gonna run through the K-cup. Over here, you got this nice big reservoir. It does come with the water filter. I got a separate video on how to install the water filter. But if, you, if it doesn't, it takes just the standard uh, Keurig tall water filter. So I like this big handle, nice big reservoir. The reservoir is 78 ounces. They call this an OLED display. You know, and just generally looking at it, it looks like a really nice coffee maker. We've got our standard uh, drip tray here. This comes apart. You can put a travel mug in here up to seven inches. You know, it's still got some of the plastic feel to it. This is the standard uh, bottom needles, uh, still the same. It's got a pretty du heavy duty cord. You got this little, uh, QR code on the back, that's to help connect to the Wi-Fi. So check out my video on the Wi-Fi. Okay, 
So again, check out my other videos if you want to know how to set it up to the Wi-Fi. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna add a K-cup. Let's add this Starbucks one. Again, you just put the K-cup in there. There is some debate whether you press it down on the needle first or not. If you're in a high altitude, you want to press it onto the bottom needle, but you don't have to, so just close the lid. It's gonna do all the work for you. This is new, Brew ID. And again, this doesn't work if it's not connected to Wi-Fi. It's gonna tell me, it, it recognizes the pod. It says, that's a Starbucks pod. This is the recommended brew setting. So when I say recommended brew setting, it, it says brewed at an eight ounce, a balanced, and on the warm setting. And see how that light is lit? That's the recommended brew button. It automatically lights that. Now, when you've got your app, it shows you that's a Pike Place Roast. And it tells you that's the recommended brew, eight ounce. And what's new is I can press this K button right here. It's as if I'm pushing this K button right here, it will do a remote brew. So you can do a brew from your smartphone. So they have made it very simple. You, you can put a K cup, it doesn't recognize all K cups. So some of the generic ones, it has to be kind of one that Keurig kind of makes or is involved with. It doesn't rec So if it doesn't recognize them, it won't say that this is a, uh, a Victor Allen French roast. It'll say that it's just a want to do a classic brew. I'll show you that. But all I would have to do is it, it already loaded all the settings and I would just press the K button. But let's, I'm going to show you the different strengths. So this is where I told you you've got balanced, rich, robust, strong, and intense. These are all different levels of brew. Now, what they do is they just, it takes a little bit longer for the hot water to go through there, but they do have five strengths. And I like that they label them because instead of saying that's the number two strength, they give it a rich, robust, strong, intense. Same with the temperatures. I got six temperatures and they give each one of them a label. So I got warm, warmer, hot, hotter, and max hot. I'm gonna do a separate video to show you exactly what each one of those settings does. I'll show you ex exactly how hot the water is on each one of those settings, and I'll show you exactly how long each one brews. There's not gonna be enough time in this video. That's a lot of different settings, but I'm gonna show you. And again, if I wanna go back, so I've changed some of the settings, but if I wanna go back to what it recommended, just press that button. I'm back to the recommended brew. So this coffee maker is very quick and very quiet. Now I'm just gonna press the K button. It's brewing. It's got a little sign up there that says brew ID, Pike Place Roast. This even tells you that it's brewing. I could cancel it. This is a very fast Keurig and a very quiet Keurig. That started brewing within about 10, 15 seconds. Okay, in about a minute, you've got a cup of coffee that tastes really good. Again, the coffee maker is extremely quiet. It's done brewing and it prides itself on that it's ready to go for your next cup of coffee. So I could put another K cup in there, press the K button and it would be ready to go. So something else, it knows that's a used pod and it doesn't, it will let you brew through it again, but it just warns you, hey, that's a used pod, don't brew through it again. Even over here on the app, it's gonna tell you, um, remove the used pod. So pretty fancy features. So it does come with this. This is what this is the manual. This is the quick start guide. Now, the, I should have told you one of the first things you want to do is go to the website. Keurig's website, you've got to get the use and care guide. This booklet has a lot more information on it. A lot more talks about the menu and all the other things that this one doesn't necessarily get into. Okay, so here we have the Keurig website. I want to show you this manual is very important. Click on the new coffee maker, scroll down. Again, we're on the smart coffee maker. Scroll down, you're gonna to wanna to see more. Scroll down, it's a little bitty link right there. Use and care guide, click on that. It's a PDF, extremely important. I would print that out and keep that very handy. Okay, so this does have an over ice. 
This little button here, it's a little tricky, but that is the over the ice button. So when you press that, you gotta have a, a lot of these functions, you gotta have a K cup in there. Right now, I've got the used K cup in there. So I'm gonna lift it up, take out my K cup. Now with these five needles, I have noticed you do get some coffee grounds up here, just like on the K, other K Supremes, but they don't make their way into your coffee. They stay on top, if that makes any sense. For them to get into your coffee, they'd have to go around the K cup. Now, if they get too bad up here, they will start to do that. But every once in a while, just do a fresh water rinse. So don't have a cake up in here. When it closes, it's gonna recognize that there's no cake up in there and you can just dispense hot water. Press the K button. If I wanna do eight ounce, let's just do six ounce. And it's dispensing hot water. So that's gonna have a little bit of coffee taste to it. So if you did a couple um, rinses, then you would get some nice hot water out that didn't have a lot of coffee taste in it. Over here in my app, my app is telling me that it's dispensing hot water at the six ounce mark. So one of the things I always do, I do like to cut my K-cups open. I wanna show you how it does brew them. So in the bottom, it punctured the hole in the bottom and it punctured five holes on top. So yeah, Starbucks K-cups have this little extra wafer in here. But there, your coffee grounds are in a filter here. So here I've got the top cut off. There's where the five needle holes went in. And there's your coffee grounds. I do think the five needle holes do brew a little bit nicer um, coffee for you. So it looks like it did a pretty good job with the coffee grounds. Okay, so let's do some temperature checks. Let's put this green mountain in. Close it. It took a picture of it, it's doing brew ID. Over here, we can see what's going on too. It says that's a dark magic. Recommended brew. Now I've got some favorites saved in here. Check out my other video on how to do the favorites, but I can swipe over to the recommended brew or I can swipe between my favorites. And I've got a whole nother video on how to do a scheduled brew. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's my favorites list. But again, I can hit this K button right here on my smartphone or tablet. Now I like this, it always comes up with this. Check, make sure you got a mug. I've been caught. I've, I've done this a few times without a mug, but I always catch it when I see this kit, this is a pop-up. Hit continue. This is something new here. See, remote brew in progress. That's letting me know that I brewed it from my remote. Now something else Keurig is doing, so hold on, let's do some temperatures. So about 186. I'll have to see what settings the recommended brew settings were on. That's still a pretty hot cup of coffee coming out. 188. Okay, so that used, that stayed around 188. So again, I don't have to use what the brew ID said. I can change it to whatever I want. You know, if, if I already know that I like my K-cups on six ounces or 10 ounces, I can change all of that. Um, I like to just go with what the brew ID tells me to. So I'm going to lift. So I want to show you this. So say I leave the K-cup in there. The brew ID is going to sense that it's an old K-cup. Oh, it didn't. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Let's try that again. So it's not perfect. Huh. Try it one more time. Nope, didn't do it. Let's see if it does it this time. Caution, okay, so this time it did say. 
It's a used pod, can cause overflow and damage. So you can bypass it by clicking OK, and then it will let you do brew through it again. But I had to try it on another K cup. I'm not sure. This Green Mountain one, it didn't work, but it, it did in the past. So you can tell the, the app is in constant contact. It's telling me to close the handle. There's a caution. So these things are, are constantly communicating to each other. They've got to be on the same Wi-Fi network. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to get into the menu. If you hold these two arrows, you get into the settings. They don't show you that in the first menu. You got to get the more the the um, use and care manual off of the internet. But here's the settings menu, and these little uh, lights are lit up corresponding to what's on the screen. So if I want to exit it, I just pick exit. But if I want to go back in, you don't have to press these very long. Next, this is the Wi-Fi. I can select what Wi-Fi or or set up the Wi-Fi there. High altitude, on and off, language, English or French. This has a water filter reminder. This display will remind you to change your water filter after two months. Brewer info and version, support, and a factory reset. So I show you how to do a factory reset on this. It'll, it's just like you pulled it brand new out of the box when you do that. It forgets the Wi-Fi and, and all everything. Then you gotta exit, that's all the settings. Now originally they told me in that manual that the descale mode was inside the settings menu, but I couldn't find it. I didn't see it in there. Now they tell you that it's gonna tell you to descale it after 250 brews, and then you'll be able to follow the on-screen instructions on how to descale it. But um, it's also said you were able to descale it in the settings before you needed to descale it. But I got an email into Keurig, and hopefully they're gonna get back to me and show me uh, how to descale it before the descale light comes on. So I need to exit. Now I'm back to my original screen. Okay, so let's talk about the app a little bit. I'm gonna go over the app. Okay, so here again, this is what this is kind of what the, the big K button relates to. I can change the size of the hot water I want to brew because I don't have a cake up in there right now. But down here at the bottom, you've got brew, which is like the brewer shop. You can actually buy your K cups with through the app, your orders, your inbox, they're going to send you different notifications and settings. You're going to see your account, my brewers. There's the brewer. You do get uh, an extra year of warranty. So you get two years worth of warranty if you if, by just connecting it to the internet. It normally just comes with a one um, year warranty. Favorites, these are my favorites. Um, let's go back to brew. Okay, so I wanna show, let's go to favorites. Click this little favorites button. Let's add a favorites. I wanna show you, these sliders are really cool. So I can, this is where I can name the favorite. I can say this is Tom. And say I, this is what I wanna brew my, uh, my Starbucks at. So when I put a Starbucks cup in there, when I label it, it's going to show up on the screen under my favorites too. And now I can use these sliders. These are my ounces. Say I, I know I don't want to brew an eight ounce. I want to go all the way to intense and all the way to max hot. Then hit create favorite. And there it is. It's created. Tom's Starbucks. So I want it, So this thing does talk to your brewer and it, you, it kind of senses what you've been brewing. So back, on, back under the My Brewer. If you click this little My Brew style, it is telling Keurig what, see, brews you love. Here's what you've been brewing lately. So they know what I've been brewing. By taking that picture of it, it is actually sending it to the Keurig website. Now, it, it doesn't tell me how many I've brewed. Maybe I need to dig into it farther. But with this auto order, they're going to know if you, if you just bought a 24-pack of the Starbucks, and it says... When you get down to just 10 K cups at your house, it's going to reorder you another box or how much ever you've got set up. So the, the auto order is going to be connected to this, your brewer and the brewer is going to be, this thing is sending information up to uh, Keurig to let you know, to let them know what you're brewing. I don't know exactly what information it's sending, but, and it does give me some recommendations of what I might like. I can turn the brewer on and off. It does auto shut off after five minutes. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, 
So the brewer does shut off after five minutes, but, and there is no power button. So if you come up here and it's off, just hit any button or if you lift the handle. So just hit any button, it turns it on. So I'm just, I got a separate video on this. So this little calendar, this is the scheduled brew. I've got it, you can schedule a brew, but it does come up with a warning. It doesn't just brew the cup of coffee for you on it. You get a notification saying, hey, do you want to do this scheduled brew? So check out that video on that. So here, let's install, let's insert one that we don't know that it's going to um, recognize. This is a great value one. Let's install it. You can watch the camera, take a picture of it. See the light come on. The brew ID is working. I'm not sure if it's going to recognize it or not. So when it doesn't recognize it, it calls it a classic brew. Eight ounce balanced hot. So what is hot? Hot is in the middle and balanced is all the way to the left. So that's what they consider a, a no, I just made a custom brew. But go back to this. There's the recommended brew. I know it says it's unavailable because it doesn't recognize the pot. And then it just goes to a classic brew. So Keurig says they are going to be adding more like K-cups to it all the time. But then I also read something that it's, it really is only going to recognize ones made by Keurig. So I'm not really sure exactly what K-cups it's going to recognize, which ones it's not. Um, I was surprised, like this is a, a, a brew over ice. And it recognized the brew over ice. So that was kind of. It says brew over ice. And it lights up the brew over ice button. It's six ounces. When the brew over ice button is selected, I can't change. Yeah, I can't change the intensity. And I can't change the temperature when the brew over ice button is selected. And I can't change, oh, I can change the size, that's right. That's the only thing I can change. But I can't change the temperature or the strength. And the brew over ice is a neat feature. Uh, check out that video, I, um, I got a temperature probe hooked up to it. It actually brews, starts out hot, and as the brew goes on, it cools the brew down. Because you're brewing it into a, um, a big container of ice, so it, we know it's gonna be hot, but that way it doesn't melt all the ice right away. So I put a different cake up in there. I want to show you the favorites button. And remember how we labeled some with the smartphone app? I want to show you. So when I press, so see how that, it's got a Starbucks cake up in there now. Press the favorites button. I've got the grand, I can scroll through them. Favorite two, YouTube, favorite three. So in order to get those, that name like YouTube or Granddad Tom, I need to, I can only do that with the app. I can't do that on here. When I do a favorites with this favorite button, it only saves it as favorite two. That's what it labels it. And I only, I only can only do 10 favorites. So let's just do an intense one with full temperature. And let's do some, uh, let's do eight ounces. Again, intense and full temperature. Let's do, uh, let's time it and check some temperatures. Okay, so it's brewing right away. The app is telling me it's brewing. I can tell it's coming out a little bit slower. I'm still not getting a bunch of splatters all over though. Well, let's check that temperature. This is the hottest brew. 194, wow. 194, 195, 196. So we can say it's, it's taking a little bit longer. Again, it's not splashing a bunch. It's coming out nice and 197, 199. I've never seen a Keurig do 199. 200, I just saw 200. Two oh one. Interesting. So it does take about twice as long when you do it on the most intense, but the um, mainly the. So that is a hot cup of coffee now. 
Yeah, yeah 175. It cools off quick. 176. Hot cup of coffee. Boy, it does. That's a really hot cup of coffee. It does taste a little bit bolder. And again, the you can tell the it's telling me to remove the used pod. I've got a used pod up there. So the only thing I haven't done is you, you can connect it to your um, home device, like your Google or your Amazon device, where you talk to it and tell it to do. I'm going to do a separate video on that, but it claims you can sit in your couch and tell it to do a brew by using your uh, Amazon device or your Google device. So, And again, it's it. Um, I haven't done the descale yet because I'm waiting on Keurig to get back to me, but it's supposedly the screen's going to tell you when it's time to descale. And you'll have to put it into descale mode with the on-screen instructions. So I've had some viewers tell me, so never, when you're doing a brew, never remove the reservoir. Always make sure this reservoir is on there. I did have a viewer that kind of got theirs off to the side, or they had like a, like something fell down in here. And the reservoir looked like it was on, but it wasn't on. So for some reason, if these brewers ever do a brew, like you press the brew button and the water reservoir is not on, or if you remove it halfway through, um, it does break the machines. And there's no way of fixing them as far as I know. So I just want to throw that warning out. So another viewer told me about that, and I thought I need to start telling people about that. So one of the last things I like to do is look at the box. What are they advertising? The brew ID recognizes your cake up and customize your brew setting. I actually like that feature. I do get a lot of questions on what what do you recommend brewing this Pete's cake up at? Well, you can figure it out on your own, but they can give you some recommended settings and you can start from there. So I do like that. Ultimate customization. Five strings, six temperatures, five cup sizes. Yep, I'd agree with that. The multi-stream technology, that's the five needles on the top. I do like that. Connected convenience. Manage your favorites. Schedule your brew. Eh, I'm not I'm not too hip on the schedule your brew. Brew from anywhere. I'll have to look into that some more. 78 ounce uh, removable reservoir. And this call this the black stainless steel. So, yeah. Overall, I'm very impressed with it. I'm very, I'm very glad I bought it. Um, people have asked me, should I upgrade? Um, you know, this is a very, it's an expensive coffee maker for what it does. But they do give you a lot of features. I am impressed with the app. So the app has not been too buggy. I haven't found too many bugs in it. It works. Um, you'd be surprised some of the apps that are when they first make them. I don't know how long this app has been out, but it seems to work pretty good and it seems pretty smooth as far as you know moving it around and everything. So this was my detailed video. It got pretty long, but I have several videos that go into all the, the different things about it. This thing is a very complicated uh, coffee maker. Um, it, but it's very nice, has a lot of things going for it. Setting up the Wi-Fi was a little tricky. There's the power down. The screen tells you it's powering down. You can't change that. It's always going to power down. I don't see that as a problem because it, it powers up so quick. It's so quiet. It's so fast. Um, I just can't say enough good things. They've really got that technology figured out as far as quietness, quickness. I'll put a link in my show notes to it. Um, hopefully it's going to show up on Amazon soon. I'll put a link then when it does. I'll also put an Amazon link to my affiliate program. I am an Amazon affiliate. If you do buy things through Amazon using my link, I do get a little bit of money from that. Um, th the products don't cost you anymore, but it is a way of, of showing support for my channel. I buy all my own products with my own money. I don't have anything sent to me for free. So thanks everybody for your support. And if you could, please like and subscribe.